Hey friends! Today's video is the fourth video in my pattern projecting series. It's about mounting your projector. As I go through what I'm wearing today, I will say that this is the same shirt as the last video and that was completely unintended. It is the Everyday Tea by Ellie and Mac, the relaxed version. It is a fun Star Wars character print from Joann's. And on the bottom, once again, I have Patterns for Pirates peg legs add-ons which give me the side panels with pockets and the contraband with a, with a waistband pocket. Uh, the ones I was wearing in the other video were a black supplex. This one is a red athletic knit, which is also from Surge Fabric Shop. What can I say? Coronavirus has given me a little bit of a uniform, and it's all about comfort. Last week was a really long video. Thanks for sticking with it. And we learned how you should choose a projector. And unfortunately, we learned that there's no one right answer about the best projector. It has to be the best one for your needs and your budget and your room. Hopefully you were able to go through that process and decide on a projector. Hopefully you've ordered it and the mount and any sort of connections that you need. If you still have questions about that, go leave a comment in that video or find me on Facebook or even leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you. Once again, I'm going to say go join the Facebook group Projectors for Sewing. It is so helpful and all this that we're doing. And there's some awesome people there that are so helpful and will be able to help you also answer questions. You've got your new projector, you've tested it on the wall, you know it's working and you're ready to mount. Now what? If you have an ultra short throw, this is easy. Those are the projectors that don't actually need to be mounted. You can rig up something to kind of affix it to your desk or shelf, that way it doesn't move. Or you can prop it up with some blocks or cardboard or cardstock. And we talked about that a little bit in the last video. And certainly you can find out more about that on the Projectors for Sewing Facebook group from some people who actually have an ultra short throw projector. But really, if you have an ultra short throw, it's pretty much that simple. You want to make sure that you get it connected to your computer. If you're using a cord, get that cord tucked out of the way so nobody trips on it. Make sure it's plugged into the wall and you're ready to go. You'll want to make sure it's stabilized. You'll want to make sure that it's positioned in the right place to get the projection that you want. You don't have to sit tight and wait another week for the video on calibrating your projector. Once it's calibrated, you'll be able to move on to cutting. For the rest of you, now it's time to mount your projector. Hopefully you have all the supplies you need. We talked about using a stud or a stealing joist as the best way to install. We also talked about drywall anchors for getting that stability where you can't get into a stud or a ceiling joist. The bottom line there is make sure when we are projecting this that above everything else your projector is safely mounted and won't be falling down. I also think this is something that you're going to need a friend for. Really, this is going to be best done with two people. There's several steps to getting your projector mounted correctly, but it will be so worth it in the end. And I promise this video won't be quite as long as last week. So this is my projector. The mount is mounted to the wall. As you can see, I have shiplap, so I wasn't worried about finding a stud. That was a special request I made when my husband built this room so that I could hang anything I wanted to anywhere I wanted to. The mount comes out from the wall, and you can see it kind of bows a little bit there, which is frankly because of the way that it's designed and that I have the projector like this rather than hanging horizontally at the bottom of the mount the way it was designed. But it works. We just had to take that to, into account whenever we were hanging it up. From my horizontal test to the wall, I knew I wanted right at two feet. Any farther up was going to give me such a large projection that it wasn't going to be useful on my 24 by 36 table. This mount, I was able to screw into one, two, three points of my projector. There was another point here and another point, point under there, but I, was, I wasn't quite able to get my mount lined up for that last screw. But work, what worked out is my husband used zip ties connected to this prong to try to fine tune that adjustment to make this square to my mat. That's the next thing. You wanna make sure that your projection is square to your mat. 
that will be able to electronically adjust with Keystone, but you want to get it as physically close as possible before you start with a Keystone. Anything you digitally change like that is going to alter your, your projection some. So manually doing it is the best way to start. So we used the screws to get everything locked in. You can see this isn't really how it was designed to work, but we were certainly able to get everything screwed in so that it does work. And we used our zip tie finagling to make sure everything was nice and tight and square to the table. That seems a little odd, except the offset from my projector means that the projected image doesn't come straight out of the bottom. It kind of comes out the top, I guess is the best way to say it. Here's the same shot with the projector turned on. It's not connected to my computer right now, so you just get that blue startup screen. I do have my lights a little dimmed, that way you guys can see really well. But you can see, even though there's several inches between the edge of my table and where my projector is, it is proje now projecting directly onto my table. One of the biggest things you need to take into consideration is if your projector is if your projector is level to your table. If your table is level, perfect. Make your projector level. If your table is not level, that's fine. Not the end of the world. Just make your projector that same degree of unlevel. If your projector is somewhat level but kind of wonky, you're just going to have to do the best you can. It may leave a little bit of a distortion, but it, it won't be a huge problem unless you have a very large dip or rise in your table. And I am just going to reemphasize one more time. If you do not have a shiplap wall, then you need to find a stud, or if it's going in the ceiling, a ceiling joist. Do not trust drywall to hold up your projector and your mount. If you have no other choice but to use drywall, use a drywall anchor. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of experience with a temporary setup since I've only done my permanent mount. But you still need to take into account the level to the table, the square to the table, and the offset to make sure that your image is going exactly where you need it to. The good news is that'll be a lot easier for you to adjust because you will be able to move it as you need to. Those of us who are doing permanent installations, that's why I suggested two people. It's going to be best if one person can hold things and manipulate them while the other one screws it into the wall. And then it's going to be best if one person can hold things and manipulate them and tighten and loosen as another person looks at the level and squareness of the projection to make sure that we really get it just right. That you get your projector plugged into power and plugged into your computing device. If your projector happens to be battery powered, make sure it's charged up. And if it happens to be wireless, go ahead and follow the steps on the projector to get it connected to your Wi-Fi or to your Bluetooth. And if you're using a wireless dongle type thing, Chromecast, Amazon Video, and Apple TV, get that plugged in, get that set up, get it ready to go. Have it connected to your computer. You can project a video, you can project a picture you can project nothing just make sure that the two are connected and talking to each other happily so now we need to make sure it's completely connected to your computing device and that everybody's talking nicely to each other and ready to calibrate which is next week's video once again I'm gonna give you as broad of instruction as I can but most of what I say will be a little limited to the Windows laptop because that's what I'm using we have a Mac laptop but I haven't used it to project and then we have mobile devices, but I haven't used those to project. This is what I use for crafting, so it's what I've used. I've got my projector on. I've got my computer on. I'm going to plug in my projector to my computer. Now, I've already set this up, so it knows what I want it to do. But I'm going to hit the Windows button and the letter P. And that brings up a menu on the side here. 
I can have my screen showing only on my PC. I can have it duplicated to my projector. I can have it extended to my projector or I can have it only on the projector. I chose extend and that is because I want to make sure that the projector is able to use the resolution that it needs to use and the computer is able to use the resolution it needs to use and it helps them talk to each other much nicer. I don't have a huge problem seeing what I need to see on my pattern, but when I do, I can either pull it back over to this side of the desktop so that I can read it, or I can just open it a second time in a different PDF viewer, such as an internet browser, so that I can read it there. This really hasn't been a huge issue for me, but depending on your projector and depending on your eyesight, it might be. Right there is my normal desktop. It looks like it always does on my computer. Right here is where I've extended it. You can see it doesn't have the icons here. It does still have my taskbar at the bottom and it still has my same background, but it's a different side of my desktop. My computer and the projector are placed a little backwards for this, but I'm gonna do my best. Imagine if you will, that screen has another screen coming off right here. That screen coming off right here is this. If I take my mouse, which right now is right there, and I move it to the right, my pointer is gonna come over to this side of the screen. Now I can use my mouse over here. Now I can use my mouse over here to do whatever I need to. Blah, blah, blah. And if I need it over on the other side, I just move my mouse to the left and it's shown back up over here. I'm gonna right click and go down to display settings on my computer. It is the second from the bottom. And it, oh, here's a great example. It opens on the other side. Oh no, what do I do? I can walk over there and use that, or I'm gonna move my mouse to the left till it gets over there. I'm going to grab the top of the window and drag it to the right. It's disappeared off that screen and appeared on this screen. So it'll tell me display, rearrange your displays. I can change which is the primary display if I want to. I don't. I can click identify and I'll get a number one over there Oop. and a number two over here. I can click on the number one and then I'm changing settings for the computer screen, for the screen connected to the computer over there. My scale and layout is still at 100% where it is recommended. My display resolution is 1366 by 768, which is recommended. It is landscaped. Everything is happy. I can still see my computer screen very well. And I've clicked on number two to look at what my projector says. Again, the size, scale, all of that is at 100% recommended. The display resolution is at 1280 by 800, which is what is recommended. That is native to my projector. And I could make it my main display if I wanted to, but I like it the way it is. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the X over here and that screen will disappear entirely. It's always best to use the recommended 
setting for both the projector and the monitor. That way you'll have the best resolution possible and you will have the fewest issues with getting your calibration right here. Because if this image is distorted and it's not projecting square anymore, but it's projected stretched out this way or this way, obviously you're gonna have trouble getting your pattern projected square. Okay, so your homework this week, get your projector mounted. Get it connected to your computer. Make sure you have a plan for all your cords and everything to have them out of your way. And especially if you haven't ever used a projector before, play around with it. Get used to it. Get everything happy between your projector and your computing device. Watch me on your projector. Watch a different video on your projector. Look at some pictures. See what you can do. Play around with things a little bit. Don't be afraid. Get used to how it works so that you'll be ready to go next week. Next week we'll calibrate and then we'll get to cutting. I can't wait. Thanks for watching my videos. Like, subscribe, and comment.